we will implode more patriotic news. Thank you. Trump speeds up border wall after shock vid catches what refugees have been hiding there for months. Under the Obama administration, liberals pushed for illegals to flood into America unvetted and unchecked. The purpose of this is to fundamentally change the landscape of America by watering down our culture and language. The left desires to have open borders in order to destroy the country and then to usher in a new world order out of the chaos. Those plans were moving along quite nicely until Hillary Clinton lost the election to Donald Trump. During Trump's campaign, he promised that he would build a stronger border wall in order to thwart massive influx of illegal immigration. Of course, the left has been throwing a temper tantrum and attempting to stop the wall from being built. Now, a new video has emerged that may speed up those plans to build the wall after what was just discovered. America has been invaded by illegal immigrants and Muslim refugees in an attempt to destroy the country. There is already evidence of this happening and it is being demonstrated around the world especially in Europe. These countries in their attempt to appear politically correct have allowed migrants to take over, and now the once beautiful landscape of Europe is being destroyed. Instead of the countries across Europe enforcing their immigration laws they keep opening the door and then wonder why there is an increase of violence. However, they may rethink their policies after what was just caught on camera that is truly disturbing. A new video has emerged that shows a large number of African migrants celebrating shortly after arriving on the coast of Spain. Though what is important to note when watching this video is the obvious absence of women and children? Aren't these peaceful migrants supposed to be women and children escaping oppression? Well, that appears to be a lie as well. The clip depicts around 300 men shows going wild after crossing the Tarantula border and ran along the Esplanade where they were held by security forces to be taken to the temporary immigrant shelter center. Also, if these people are so poor and destitute, why are they carrying smartphones? These migrants, refugees are able-bodied men crossing into Europe, and it would be safe to assume not for anything good. The fact of the matter is that only 1% of refugees arriving in Italy are actually refugees. Here is more about InfoWars, the numbers, obtained by Wes Monster via Eurostat, the official body tasked with provide statistical information to the institutions of the European Union, underscore how the true nature of the migrant crisis is being completely misrepresented by the press, left-wing groups and politicians. A paltry 1.4% of asylum seekers who arrived in Italy in the first five months of 2017 were from Syria, with just 845 Syrians applying for asylum out of 58,255 arrivals between January and May this year. Despite many of the migrants passing through Libya and the country being a war-torn mess since the overthrow of Gaddafi, just 0.36% of refugees are Libyan. Over 20% of the asylum claims are from Nigerians. Bangladeshis also accounted for over 9% of asylum claims, while Pakistanis accounted for 7.5% and migrants from the Gambia accounting for 7.9% of asylum requests. None of these countries are at war. Out of the entire 248,290 asylum claims received by EU countries so far this year, just 14% were from Syrians. This includes individuals who have fake identity papers and merely claiming to be Syrian to receive better treatment. To put that into context, the combined total of asylum seekers fleeing war in Syria and Libya is less than the combined total of those coming from Nigeria, Pakistan and, wait for it, Guinea, reports West Monster. The fact that the huge majority of migrants are not refugees but are abusing the generosity of Western nations in a bid to reach the welfare havens of Northern Europe is patently clear, yet the mainstream media has steadfastly refused to acknowledge it. According to the Institute for the Analysis of Multiethnicity, ISO, 85% of asylum requests in Italy are from men, with only 4% from minors. Only 2.65% of those immigrating into Italy were awarded asylum status as refugees. The UNCRA's own data shows that, Nigerians make up nearly a fifth of the arrivals in Italy, followed by the nationals of Eritrea at 13% and then Sudan, Gambia, Ivory Coast, Guinea, Somalia, Mali, Senegal and Bangladesh, 
again emphasizing how the refugees are not even from Libya, they're arriving from countries that are not at war. In the video below, we reveal how left-wing NGOs are communicating with criminal people smugglers to provide a virtual taxi service for migrants who are being picked up just off the coast of Libya and ferry to Italy. The majority of migrants and refugees are criminals and should not be allowed to waltz into any country unchecked. Now, of course, no one wants to see Europe being destroyed by liberal policies, but that is something they will have to fight against. However, in America, we need to push for the border wall and tougher vetting processes so that we can avoid the same fate as Europe. Share if you want President Trump's border wall to be built now. H. T. Info Secrets out about what Trump's really adding to White House during renovation, Libs are furious. President Donald Trump and his family embarked on a 17-day break from the White House, where the Commander-in-Chief will be conducting business from his golf club in New Jersey. This is a working vacation of necessity since the Trumps are displaced from the West Wing while renovations are underway. We've heard that contractors will be working on fixing the aging HEC system making some repairs to the steps, and perhaps resolving a nasty cockroach problem that the Obamas left for their replacement to deal with. While these things are all necessary, there's one massive change that's secretly underway in this renovation that just got out. Among the many methods the left has employed to take President Trump down in his candidacy and now with him as president, are baseless scandals, namely the ongoing drama liberals have created to say that Trump colluded with Russia. However, what's a bigger issue than this, is Barack Obama's leftover staffers who remain in the White House. They are the real vermin issue more annoying than the actual cockroach infestation that Obama let fester for years. While contractors clean out the cockroaches, Trump's right-hand woman, Kellyanne Conway suggested what else could soon be installed to resolve the infestation of White House leakers. The Washington Times reports, Kellyanne Conway counselor to President Trump, said Friday that the White House may have staff members take a lie detector test to determine who is leaking sensitive national security information. Well they may, they may not. There are many different ways to discover who is leaking, Mrs. Conway said on Fox News. This is really incensing the people who are here to serve and that begins with the President and the Vice President, our Cabinet, and, our Chiefs of Staff. Mrs. Conway emphasized that while leaks of internal fighting, or even in the Russia investigation, are serious, the leaks concerning national security are the most dangerous. Remember, grand jury investigations are meant to remain secret so someone leaked it. It could be anybody on the grand jury, could be one of the lawyers, it could be anyone I suppose. But what really should concern everyone are leaks that concern national security. Leaking phone calls of our president and other heads of state is nothing short of a national disgrace, she said. Kelly Ann Conway, new campaign manager for Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump, speaks to reporters in the lobby of Trump Tower in New York, Wednesday, August 17, 2016. App photo, Gerald Herbert This seems like a genius idea and since the problem of leakers keeps presenting itself, it only makes sense to slow the flow by making people prove their honest intentions if given the privilege of working in the White House. Of course, the left hates this idea because it deals with being truthful which doesn't jive with their agenda. Liberals at MSNBC criticized Conway's idea by taking a comment she made completely out of context. They wanted to make the point in twisting her words about what's completely demoralizing to say that forcing staffers to submit to a lie detector test was. However, if there wasn't a leaking problem that benefits liberals, then there would be no need for this. MSNBC reports, Conway, added that it's easier to figure out who's leaking than the leakers may realize. Let's note for context that two weeks ago, Kellyanne Conway appeared on the same program and said asking prospective White House employees to comply with Office of Government Ethics rules has left many of them completely demoralized. If routine ethics paperwork has left members of the president's team completely demoralized, one wonders how those same staffers might respond to lie detector tests. 
Perhaps it's incidents like Obama's leftover Muslim staff are getting fired by Trump which they don't want happening anymore. After the president found out what he was doing behind his back for months, it only made sense to terminate him but could have been avoided long before that point had he taken a lie detector test and is behind suggested now. Just as John Kelly was making his way into the White House working for Donald Trump, George Saleem was making his way out. Saleem was in charge of former President Obama's program that attempted to redirect Islamic immigrants away from turning to jihad lifestyles that often lead to violence and mass destruction. That program was listed as countering violent extremism and identified by initials CVE started off as a new way to prevent terrorism, but eventually became a huge failure. The concept was to attempt redirection of Muslims to better lifestyles but to encourage Muslims to report when they notice someone is turning toward evil. The problem with the program was that government kept spending money on it, but it failed to yield results. There was little return on the investment because the Muslim people involved were not reporting the people who turned to jihad. This was evident as attacks continued and no one had any intelligence on the attackers. Had the program been a success, then perhaps the attacks wouldn't have happened. Those attacks include the brutal shooting at Pulse nightclub in Florida and pressure clicker bombings in New Jersey. Learning the intentions of the person running this program long before it was too late could have prevented these attacks from happening. With all Obama left behind and the way liberals are working against the success of President Trump, it's not such a silly idea as the worried left likes to say to test who is being honest or not unless you have something to hide. Shocking prediction made about what will happen to Trump in February, here's who's behind it. We know that Democrats have a problem with President Trump, that was kind of expected. It's apparent that what he stands for is in opposition to what they stand for. Republicans and Democrats opposing one another isn't news it's just what they do. But what would be news is a group of Republicans trying to circumvent the will of the people and oust the sitting president. Obviously. President Trump has a tendency to rub politicians the wrong way, and they find him difficult to work with, but they have a responsibility to play nice with whoever we send to Washington. It's unfortunate for them that if they don't particularly like one of their co-workers, but when the boss says you work with someone, you've got to suck it up and do it, that doesn't seem to be the plan of many Republicans who want to work with someone they like a little better apparently. There had already been rumors that a coup was in the making thanks to the hardcore Republicans who thought the president was acting out of turn, and now former White House officials say that they believe the plan is already in the works. Via InfoWars, former Reagan administration official David Stockman predicts that President Donald Trump could be kicked out of the Oval Office by February next year. Stockman, who served as director of the Office of Management and Budget from 1981-85, writes, Ultimately, the hammer of fiscal crisis and a crashing stock market will break any remaining loyalty of the GOP elders as they smell the 2018 elections turning into a replay of the root, sick, of 1974. And then the Donald will be gone, and well before August 2018, too. I told an audience in Vancouver last Friday that it could happen by February. Stockman thinks that Trump's ousting will be achieved probably by a threatened invocation of the 25th Amendment by the GOP elders on Capitol Hill. The 25th Amendment allows the removal of a president if he is declared to be mentally unfit, although it requires the support of two-thirds of both Congress and the Senate, as well as the vice president, making it an incredibly unlikely scenario. Stockman is by no means an ever-Trumper or a neocon. He acknowledges that the mainstream media is conducting a grand witch hunt and venomous prosecution that will not be sated until the Donald vacates the Oval Office. The bottom line is that the swamp is so undrainable that it will end up making mincemeat of Donald Trump, concludes Stockman. As we have documented, rumors of a de facto coup in the United States have been swirling for months. On his Friday show, Radio host Michael Savage warned that Americans could even resort to mob violence if Trump is removed from office by the globalists and the deep state. Pastor Rodney Howard Brown also recently claimed that he was told by a senior Republican congressman that there was a plot to remove Trump suddenly from office. Brown said the plan was to take the president out, 
by a method other than impeachment or indictment. In comments made during the Aspen Security Forum, former CIA Director John Brennan said that if the White House tries to fire Special Counsel Robert Mueller, executive branch officials should refuse to carry out that order, which is effectively a call for a coup. Last month, Rush Limbaugh also told his audience, there is a coup underway, being led by the media with accomplices in the Democrat Party and a number of international players, to reject the outcome of the election, to undermine the presidency of Donald Trump, and, if the wish list were realized, to get rid of him. We should be absolutely irate that there's no longer even a pretext of trying to honor the wishes of the voters anymore. They don't like who we picked so they're rallying support to oust him. This is an egregious offense to the plan put in place by the Founding Fathers who set up a system that would ensure voters got to choose the president. It would be one thing if the other side thought that he had lied, which they have tried time and time again to prove, with no success, but they aren't giving any good reason for his being unfit for office, they just want their way. It's no longer an issue of what's best for the nation, it's what's best for the lawmakers who are annoyed with President Trump regardless of what we want. This should be a traumatizing event, we would be so shocked with their conduct that we're willing to kick them all out of office. If ever you needed proof that many of the politicians on both sides were corrupt, this would be it. And if ever you needed to know when you should take a stand, this would be it. If they're successful in impeaching the president just because they don't like them, democracy truly won't be dead. Source, InfoWars Share to get the word out about what's happening in Wash. Trump immediately stops golf game and jumps out of cart when he sees who else is on his course. President Donald Trump is spending the next 17 days at his golf club in Bedminster, New Jersey. While he's at his time at his home away from home and working, he treated himself to a well deserved round of golf over the weekend. In between holes, he saw who else was on the course and suddenly stopped his game and jumped out of the golf cart to address the unexpected guests. There are a lot of liberals who seem to have a problem with the president taking time away from the White House while the West Wing undergoes some necessary renovations. He's not costing taxpayers anything extra since he's staying at one of his many properties. The fact that it has a golf course attached to it makes them critical of how he'll be spending his time there completely ignoring that Barack Obama spent a record amount of hours on the course perfecting his swing while letting the country crumble under his lack of leadership. When Barack was teeing off, he couldn't be bothered by anything. It was practically impossible to get him to address the death of a hero or a catastrophe and most of the time he chose to ignore it. President Trump couldn't be more opposite as the people's president, taking time for citizens no matter what. We saw this on Saturday when he dropped everything to address who he saw at his club. As one of the most approachable presidents in history, Trump makes everyone around him important, especially the common man. This was certainly the case over the weekend when he playfully inserted himself into couples' wedding who had picked his club to tie the knot. The sudden guest of honor had something to say to the newlyweds which won't be soon forgotten. Fox 6 now reports. President Donald Trump took some time away from his working vacation on Saturday, August 5 to engage in what has become a staple of his weekend getaways. He crashed a wedding. At his Bedminster, New Jersey, golf club, President Trump interrupted his first full day of vacation by hopping out of his golf cart to greet several wedding guests and take some selfies while sporting golf attire and his red Make America Great Again hat. Everyone having a good time? President Trump passed the group while flashing a thumbs up, as seen in a video posted on social media. That same evening, he was forced to also address his detractors who had a problem with what he's doing. Working in Bedminster, NJ, as long planned construction is being done at the White House. This is not a vacation, meetings and calls. He said in a tweet to reassure Americans not to fall victim to the rumors that the left is spreading that he's not doing his job for 17 straight days. Considering that the couple had picked a Trump property to tie the knot, it's safe to assume that they are supporters of the president. It had to have been an incredible wedding surprise to have the commander-in-chief crash the party and offer a personal message to the couple. Ironically, Trump's former competition for the White House, Hillary Clinton, 
was also at a wedding this weekend. However, the reception of her presence in New York City was much different than Trump's just one state away. As we reported on Monday, Hillary was humiliated in public the day before the wedding when on a city stroll with her gal pals. A paparazzi camera caught the threesome and two Secret Service members walking among others and not a single person seemed to care that they were brushing shoulders with the former presidential candidate. This had to have been a huge blow to her ego, but perhaps not as much as when she showed up to the wedding the next day in an embarrassing ensemble that looked more like a blue tint than a formal gown. On the flip side, everyone at the New Jersey wedding was elated by Trump's happen chance arrival in his red MAGA hat and casual golf attire. The responses speak volumes of the two who were both presidential hopefuls at one time and represents the reason why Trump took office and Hillary didn't. Trump talks to people like he's one of them, not superior to them. Just the fact that he stopped to wish them a happy wedding day and marriage proves that he cares about citizens, which is a refreshing sight after eight years of an arrogant leader who couldn't be bothered by the little guy. H slash T, Bizpack.